My name is Christine Slotville Kimbriel. Uh, I'm a paintings conservator um, and I am collaborating with Paola Bricciardi on this project on Isaac Oliver, which is, should we say, an expansion of a, an original pilot study we have done on about 10 miniatures by Isaac Oliver. And at the moment, we are fortunate enough to have borrowed 18 miniatures from the Royal Collection, all attributed also to Isaac Oliver, that we are analysing. And today, some of them are being analysed with scanning XRF, which is quite exciting. But otherwise, we're using quite a wide range of um, non-invasive analytical methods to look at them. In terms of what we're learning ab about these miniatures, well, the first project, our pilot study, was called Secrets of a Silent Miniaturist. And we called that because Isaac Oliver is a bit of a mystery figure. He was an incredibly talented miniaturist. We're pretty sure he was apprenticed to Nicholas Hilliard, the biggest name in Tudor period miniatures in this country. But we know so little about Isaac Oliver and there is very little documentary evidence about him. So we're basically trying to learn more about his oeuvre, his artwork, his approach, his workshop practices and his sitters through looking really, really closely at um, these miniatures that survive by him. Um, and basically we're doing it um, through technical photography and material analysis as well. It means that we take the miniatures out of their lockets that they're normally protected in just for the analysis. And because we're doing that, and it's not, not something one should do frivolously, we're trying to document them as well as we possibly can and we plan to share all of this information we're gathering, all the images on a digital resource once the project is uh, finished um, so everybody can basically access it online. One of the miniatures we have selected for the macro XRF scanning that we're doing today, we've chosen because when we did spot analysis on that one and also when we looked at it under the microscope, we could see first of all that it was heavily repainted in all the white passages, but we could just about uh, see the sort of grey yellow original painting underneath and we couldn't understand why these white passages had changed colour so much, which of course was what prompted the overpainting. Um, the spot analysis suggested that the, this uh, grey paint underneath was uh, a mercury chloride. Um, that's highly unusual, we've never found that before in a miniature. And what's interesting is that we think it explains a sentence in Nicholas Hilliard's treatise about miniature painting or limning, where he says that there is a quicksilver white which draws a very fine line uh, and this is the, the white that women painters use. And this has been puzzling uh, scholars what, what he means by women painters. Um, we think it, it doesn't actually refer to actual artists, uh, female artists, but instead it refers to the fact that women would use a mercury chloride material as a makeup at the time. It was a white powder and they would use it in ointments and creams on their skin to whiten their complexion with. Um, and that's been written about by Richard Haydock, um, who in a, in a translation of Paolo Lomazzo's treatise in 1598 includes actually nothing from Lomazzo but his own addition um, in, inside this translation about the dangers of using this mercury white material which he calls sublimate because there's a kind of mercury chloride that actually is corrosive and will give you mercury poisoning if you use it. What we found on the miniature is a, is a mercury chloride that isn't corrosive and it doesn't dissolve in water, so you can use it as a paint. And probably the trouble was that at the time, whether you were using one mercury chloride or another mercury chloride product was not quite clear always to these women, um, hence the warning by the physician.